I'm not going to watch it. Um, I'm not going to watch the Markiplier video. Uh, we're going to do good cop gets fired, bad cop, good cop gets bad cop fired and arrested. Out Some the copaganda. And what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers use of force, officer obstruction, and official misconduct, and is brought to us by Cameras Everywhere's channel. And we got a new box video too. And give them the credit that they deserve. On July 26, 2021, Officer David Lance Dukes of the Orangeburg Department of Public Safety responded to a call regarding a man banging on a townhouse door, allegedly with a gun in his waistband. When he arrived on the scene, Officer Dukes immediately drew his gun and ordered 58-year-old disabled man Clarence Gale Yard and his cousin Mario Julian, who were standing in the parking lot outside the townhouse, to the ground. Hey, let me see your hands. Bert, get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground right here. Get on the ground. You, Bert, you shark, get on the ground. Over here. On the ground. On the ground. Get on the ground. Do, do you not listen? Get on the ground. Mr. Galeyard attempts to comply with Officer Dukes' orders by getting onto his hands and knees, but Officer Dukes forcefully uses his foot to attempt to force Mr. Galeyard all the way to the ground. Typical, dude. Classic. Fucking typical, classic bullshit, dude. Classic. All right causing his head to violently hit the pavement. In the 1989 case of Graham versus Connor, the Supreme Court explained that the Fourth Amendment requires a police officer's use of force to be quote-unquote reasonable under the circumstances, and identified three factors that courts should consider when determining whether an instance of force was reasonable. These factors include, quote, the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. More recently, in the 2016 case of Armstrong versus Village of Pinehurst, the Fourth Circuit, which includes South Carolina, held that, quote, non-compliance with lawful orders justifies some use of force, but the level of justified force varies based on the risks posed by the resistance. Even purely passive resistance can support the use of some force, but the level of force an individual's resistance will support is dependent on the factual circumstances underlying that resistance. In this situation, the severity of the crime at issue was limited at best. Although Officer Dukes claimed to believe that Mr. Galeyard had a gun at the beginning of the interaction. However, at the time Officer Dukes used force against Mr. Galeyard, it was clear that he did not pose an immediate threat, as he had raised both of his empty hands above his head before getting on his hands and knees. Finally, Mr. Galeyard was not resisting arrest in any way. In fact, he was attempting to comply with Officer Dukes' commands when the force was employed. Under these circumstances, it is highly likely that a court would conclude that Officer Dukes' use of force against Mr. Galeyard was neither justified nor reasonable. Is there a gun back there? No by that truck. Broad enough that any action can warrant any use of force by police? Of course, that is by design, for the record. For those of you who don't know, that is deliberate, that is by design, that's why the way that it is written that way. No gun. You're not listening, dude. You got a gun on you, man? No, I ain't got no gun. All right, I don't I'm just want asking. no gun. I don't want no gun. Paul, are you watching him say? Okay, I gotta pee real quick. I'll be back in a second, okay? He had something. Also, I'm gonna run the top of the hour ad break right now. Yeah, I'm just asking. Why did you? Why are you asking that? Why did you do this? Why did you fucking bash his skull in? Absolutely psychotic. At the top of the hour, the six second ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, if you want an uninterrupted broadcast experience, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account uh, to your Twitch account, or you can get gifted a sub. Here's the one minute ad break now. I got to go pee real quick. I'll be back. The door's unlocked. It's not on No, he was right here. Watch him. Go watch him. There it is. 
Alright, that's what he had. Alright, who's the complainant? Alright, get up. Get, get him up. Put the leg up. 25 seconds, got one tank. Alright, put the leg that way so you can I'm stand up. Alright, listen, I'm about to help you. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Alright, ready? One, two, three. Sorry. Yep. Listen. Yep, they slammed my head Listen. down on the cement. Yep. Go back inside. Go back in the house. Go back in the yep. house. Ain't nobody talking to you. I got head drum. Go back in the house. Yep. Y'all bust my head down. Yep. I've been in accident. Yep. Y'all bust my head down. You throw me down. I so did. You wasn't listening. Yep. No, it ain't. You ain't just threw me down like that. I'm disability. Okay. I got head problems. Yup. You threw me down. Yup. You threw me down. You threw me down. Yup. You bust my head down on the cement. Yup. You bust my head. All right, let me tell you what happened. That's forehead. You bust my head down on the cement. He was, he was in front of the car when I came up. And he was walking like this, and I, I thought it was a gun at first. I said, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun, had him at gunpoint. And he's over here doing something like this. What he was doing is putting this up behind the tire. So he comes over right here, he got his hands in his pockets. Yeah, I w wait, that's crazy. I can't believe, wait, first of all, did he even do that? I didn't even see that. But that's just the fucking... Isn't that a tire iron? Like, what the fuck? Why would he... No, he didn't? Oh, he's just lying about it? I didn't... Cause Sorry, I was peeing. He had something. I ain't no gun. The door's on the car, so... No, he... It's such a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Because, like, if he... If he came up, he didn't have anything in his hands. If he had anything in his hands, you would have shot him. You came in hot as fuck with your, with your service weapon, trained at this dude. Right? Like, you're ready to fucking shoot him. Right here. Watch him. Go watch him. If it's just the tire iron... There it is. Alright, that's what he had. What the fuck is that? That's nothing. I thought it was a tire iron. It's just a fucking stick. Right, that's what, he had. what the fuck is that? That thing didn't even put a dent in the gut. It's duct tape. I thought that was a tire iron. What the fuck? You can't even have like a, a stick with duct tape on it. What the fuck is that? Bro, cops be, cops be like, wow, do you see this? In the right hands, this is a weapon, okay? Like, for example, what if you put this in the freezer? Okay, what if you put this in the freezer for an extended period of time and then you just handed it off to me and I, unbeknownst to me, didn't realize this was in the freezer and I opened it and it exploded in my face. That's a weapon. That's a lethal fucking weapon, dude. That's fucked up. All right, who's the complainant? All right, get, up. get, get him up. Put the leg up. 25 seconds, got one tank. All right, put the leg that way so you can I'm stand up. You. All right, listen, I'm about to help you. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, ready? One, two, three. Sorry. Yep. Listen. Yep, they slammed my head Listen. down on the cement. Yep. Go back inside. Go back in the house. Go back in the house. Ain't nobody talking to you. I got head. He said, call EMS. Go back in the house. Yep. Y'all bust my head down. Yep. I've been in accident. Yup, y'all bust my head down. You threw me down. I sure did. You wasn't listening. Yup, 
know that you had to throw me down like that. Mm -hmm. I'm disability. Okay. I got head problems. Yup. You throw me down. Yup. You throw me down. You throw me down. <coughs> yup. You bust my head down on the cement. <coughs> that other person could absolutely stand out there. Except the main reason why that fucking person walked back into his own house is not because, like, it's illegal for him to stand out there. It's, out of, it's outside his own goddamn house. He could totally fucking stand out there all he wants. It's out of fear. And, and very reasonable fear that uh, he, is, he doesn't want to be the next guy that they bust ahead of. Okay? That's the, that's the reason. Broke my head down on the cement. He was, he was in front of the car when I came up. And he was walking like this, and I, I thought it was a gun at first. I said, "Drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun." Had him at gunpoint. And he's over here doing something like this. You slammed my head. You slammed my head. What he was doing is putting this up behind the tire. So he comes over right here. He got his hands in his pockets. I'm telling him, "Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands." He wasn't listening. He got the, like this right here, and we went on to the ground. Officer Dukes claims that when Mr. Galeyard was walking from behind the white vehicle, he believed that he had a gun and repeatedly told him to drop it. Officer Dukes also alleges that once Mr. Galeyard stepped in front of the vehicle, he had his hands in his pockets and repeatedly ignored requests to show his hands. However, the body cam footage shows that Mr. Galeyard actually had his hands above his head, and that while Officer Dukes repeatedly screamed at Mr. Galeyard to get on the ground, he never asked him to drop a gun or show his hands, likely because Mr. Galeyard's hands were visible throughout the encounter. An incident report filed by Corporal Brandy Smith, who was also on the scene, states that while Mr. Galeyard was walking from the passenger side of the vehicle, he appeared to have- Why is he lying? It's all on his body camera. Great question. Uh, because cops lie all the fucking time because they can get away with it. In most of these circumstances, in most of these circumstances, especially if you're not like a gigantic asshole that other cops don't fucking like either uh, on the force- you will 100% get away with that shit. Who's going to check? Other cops are going to check. That is if they escalate this, okay? You understand? This kind of stuff rarely ever gets escalated to internal affairs. And if it gets to escalated to internal affairs, that's still literally other fucking... Uh, that, that's still literally other... Uh, oh God, Jank is like sending me the dumbest fucking text message right now in the middle of everything. Um... It gets escalated to other cops who are, in more cases, and more often than not, are, are going to turn the other cheek. They're going to look the other way. Sorry. Okay? It's only when you're, like, a particularly uh, annoying asshole that even other cops don't like. That's the only time when... Uh, that's the only time they actually end up getting in trouble if someone does pockets, report it but that once he reached the front of the vehicle he took his hands out of his pockets corporal smith's report also states that officer dukes was giving loud verbal commands for mr galeyard to get on the ground but makes no mention of a gun or any commands to drop a gun or show his hands it's also important to note that when officer dukes was reporting what happened he did not explain the method he used to take mr galeyard down corporal smith's report claimed that when mr galeyard did not get completely on the ground officer dukes pushed him to the ground by placing his right foot on the middle of Mr. Galeyard's back. However, the incident report filed by Sergeant Aquel Polidor states that Officer Dukes, quote, jumped up and stomped Mr. Galeyard on the back of his neck with his foot, although it is unclear from the body camera footage whether Officer Dukes' foot landed on Mr. Galeyard's neck or upper back, it is certain that the version of events Officer Dukes explained to his commanding officer did not align with the body camera footage or the reports filed by his colleagues. Right, cause you bust me down on the seat. Where's the complainant? You bust my head down on the seat. Right here? No. Do you think your viewers are mentally disabled when they say ACAP? Sure, cops do things wrong. Saying ACAP is just pathetic in my opinion. Everybody probably knows someone that has gotten help from a police. Yeah, totally. Probably, dude. Yeah, definitely. My friend, people say all cops are bad or all cops are bastards. Not because, like, each individual that fucking puts on the badge is a bad person across the board in every facet of their lives. They say that because when you do put on the fucking badge, you have to do cop shit. And doing cop shit means upholding all fucking laws. Doing cop shit means 
protecting and serving the interests of capital rather than protecting and serving the interests of the people you are supposed to be protecting and serving. Okay? So a cop might be a good person when they're not a cop. You know, maybe. Someone might have even joined the force under positive assumptions, under the assumption that they're going to be like a nice person that ends up, uh, you know, changing the attitude of the force or a nice person that just wants to help out his community, his or her community. But ultimately, cops do a lot of stuff like this. And more importantly, as you notice, a lot of the other cops aren't doing anything when this old dude who's disabled is getting his fucking skull bashed by the fucking fat pig. Because that's what cops are supposed to do. That's their purpose. Their purpose is to destroy uh, the poor people, marginalized people, even white poor marginalized people as well, by the way. Where's the complaint? I'm trying to get the name of the complaint. So. What's my head? What's, what are we doing? I guess Sam was going to check him out. There ain't nothing about here who wants to press charges. Who called? I'm not sure. Um, Take him out of cuffs right now. I mean, because that's what we got. We're going to have to use the force. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Dude, I didn't know what his intention was. You need to have a look at the camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. The officer did wrong. Slam my head down. Brush my forehead. Damn right. You don't want to pay me for that. Mayor, I'm going to take that into evidence of what he had. What? Well, I mean, his, you know, that's, that's the reasons I did what I did. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm coming from. How does marginalizing poor people protect capital? What do you mean? You're separating the poors from the rich. You don't want the fucking disgusting poors to come into your neighborhood and stink up the place. What the fuck are you talking about? You don't want the disgusting uh, working poors to get together and organize and do a fucking protest outside of your work. You don't want the working poors to get together and organize in their work for, uh, workplace and, God forbid, do a work stoppage, a strike. Someone needs to bust their skulls in and teach them a fucking lesson. Who's done that historically? I'm sure you live in the hood, bro. No, of course I don't live in the hood. What the fuck do you mean? I'm in West Hollywood. What does me living in the hood or not have anything to do with this? I'm not saying I live in the hood either. I've never said that. You dumb bitch. Because when he was behind the truck, I couldn't see what he was doing. And I didn't know where... There ain't nothing there. Where that went? It was still in his pockets when he come around that car with his hands in his pockets. He stole the dog. No, on camera. Yeah, a dog stick. A dog stick. So he can come out of cuffs. Yes. Take him out of hands. Yeah, he can come out. Oh Lord. Dude. I feel like this guy, first of all, even the cops kind of seem like cops are doing something that you don't often see them do, which is like not immediately pat him on the back, which is surprising. Even they kind of look like, even they kind of are looking at him like, bro, you fucked up. Like. Which is surprising, which is why I'm saying like this homie might not have been like well liked in the force or something, which probably played a role in this getting escalated. You know what I mean? Oh, 
Okay, what's your badge number? 1059. Let me see if I can get my phone. Hold on. Hold on. We, we, we have cars. Okay. Thank you. When Mr. Julian asks Officer oh Dukes my for a business God. card. Bro, look at her. Okay. Yeah. I see who corroborated the witness report in the fucking, uh, you know. <laughs> I can tell. I, I see who corroborated the report of the witnesses in, in, uh, when, they, when they internally filed for an internal affairs review of the misconduct that occurred here. Officer Dukes claims they are not issued cards by their department. However, Sergeant Polidor immediately corrects Officer Dukes, states that they do have cards, and provides Mr. Julian with the information he requested. If it was concluded that Officer Dukes intentionally lied to Mr. Julian in an attempt to avoid accountability for his actions, it is possible that he could be convicted of two common law crimes under South Carolina law, obstruction of justice and official misconduct. In the 1997 case of State v. Lyles Gray, a court of appeals in South Carolina upheld convictions for both of these offenses dude getting in trouble as a fucking cop in the united states of america is like getting arrested for um uh, getting arrested for like straw uh straw donations to a political campaign like the law is designed to protect you every step of the way also shouts out to dinesh d'souza for going to jail specifically for that by the way like like how are you bribing politicians when it's legal to do so are you that fucking dumb that you couldn't, you know, go through a super PAC like you had to do it illegally? And it's the same for cops. If you're getting into trouble as a cop, you really fucked up. Like, you are really, really just, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like insider trading for Congress people, okay? Which, of course, I don't think there's a singular example of insider trading. Uh, like, congresspersons getting genuinely arrested for insider trading, so. You know against an officer in the Camden Police Department for her conduct during a criminal investigation. The court explained that, quote, under common law obstruction of justice, it is an offense to do any act which prevents, obstructs, impedes, or hinders the administration of justice. And that, quote, misconduct in office occurs when persons in public office fail to properly and faithfully discharge a duty imposed by law. In this situation, the court concluded that the officer obstructed justice and committed misconduct in office by failing to interview witnesses after her daughter was identified identified as a suspect, obtaining a false arrest warrant for another suspect, and withholding evidence. While Officer Dukes's lie about whether the department issues identification cards did not rise to the same level of misconduct, given the broad definition of both of these offenses, it is still possible that he could be convicted if charged. However, it is important to note that while some states legally require officers to provide ID to citizens upon request, South Carolina law does not place this obligation on officers. Additionally, many police departments have policies requiring that that officers identify themselves, but the Orangeburg Department of Public Safety's policy is not publicly available, and it is unclear whether their policy adheres to any form of officer identification guidelines. Yeah. All right. Brandon, you can get this stuff off the car. Wait, what's he doing? Yeah. After it's, a, it's a secret pig sign, the other pigs. Mr. Galeyard was treated by EMS. He and Mr. Julian were allowed to leave. Two days after the incident, Officer Dukes was fired from the Orangeburg Department of Public Safety for violating the department's use of force policies, which as stated before, are not publicly available. On August 25th, 2021, former officer Dukes was charged with first-degree assault and battery, which could carry a sentence of up to 10 years in prison. As of the date of this episode, Mr. Galeyard is represented by an attorney, but he has not yet taken any legal action against officer Dukes or the department. Overall, former Orangeburg officer Dukes 
gets an F for physically assaulting Mr. Galeyard for no apparent reason, blatantly lying about the nature of the interaction in his police report, and for making a concerted effort to avoid being held accountable for his ridiculous antics. At no point during this encounter was Mr. Dukes in any danger, and it is clear that his violent actions were motivated by his ego, not officer or civilian safety. There was absolutely no legitimate excuse for shoving Mr. Galeyard's face into the pavement when it was plainly obvious that he was attempting to surrender, and this is exactly exactly the type of conduct that has sparked nationwide unrest regarding members of law enforcement. Mr. Dukes's feeble attempts to explain his actions and manipulate the facts of the encounter only add to his incredulous and insidious behavior, and his conduct was nothing short of unacceptable. I commend the Orangeburg Department of Public Safety for immediately firing Mr. Dukes and pursuing criminal charges against him, and if there were a lower grade than an F, he certainly deserves that. Sergeant Polidor gets an A plus for remaining truthful and objective throughout the encounter, ensuring that Mr. Julian was given the necessary information to follow up on the incident, and for maintaining a calm, collected, and professional attitude throughout the interaction. Although it cannot be proven with any degree of certainty, I suspect that Sergeant Polidor was highly involved in the Orangeburg Department's decision to fire and charge Mr. Dukes. And I mean that 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 face alone, like it's just. That's that's the look of someone that's like, dude, you what the fuck? What are you doing? Like, what the fuck are you even doing? I mean, the other cop too, even. And normally, I think that normally, I think in other situations, if this was like a well liked and well respected cop, I don't think they would have done this. I think they would have fucking probably defended him. <coughs> That's what I'm pointing out. That's why I said it seems like this is a a unique circumstance, if you know what I mean. And the testimony that she offered in her incident report likely played a vital role in making certain that he was held accountable for his actions. Officers who witness acts of misconduct are often placed in a position where they must consider whether reporting that misconduct is worth the potential damage to their career that could arise from pursuing accountability for the actions of their colleagues. And it is all too common to see members of law enforcement justify the actions of their peers in any way they can to avoid facing the repercussions of speaking out against them. This notion was on full display in this very interaction when Sergeant Meyer fist bumped Mr. Dukes for an appropriate use of force without knowing any of the details beyond what Mr. Dukes had told him. I commend Sergeant Polidor for having the courage and conviction to hold Mr. Dukes accountable for his actions, and I sincerely hope that her actions inspire other officers who witness misconduct to come forward and do the same within their department. As for Mr. Galeyard and Mr. Julian, I cannot rightfully issue a grade to individuals whose actions were purely dictated by the conduct of the officers on the scene. Nothing the pair did was uncivil, and the two obeyed all the commands of the officers to the best of their ability without knowing. <laughs> this channel is so wild because in other circumstances, they do end up grading like black people on how how well they got fucking owned by cops. You know what I mean? I find that a little odd. Maybe I don't know. It is a little bizarre. You know what I mean? We're just like. Hey, in this circumstance of police brutality, these black people behaved really well. <laughs> Knowing the context of the encounter, it could certainly be argued that both Mr. Galeyard and Mr. Julian were both victims of police misconduct, one by way of physical violence and the other by an attempt to avoid accountability. It should be noted that Mr. Julian made a legitimate effort to gather then-Officer Dukes's personnel information, presumably in an effort to file a complaint against him, and I commend him for sensing that Mr. Dukes's actions were unlawful. It's, it's a little weird, but... To be fair, I think he also talks about best practices on how to deal with police brutality. And like, look, he's grading him on like going after and immediately trying to gather personal information. I mean, grading is still insensitive. Don't misunderstand me. Especially like, you know, <laughs> here, I'm grading these victims <laughs> of police brutality and how they behave is weird as fuck. Um, but I do think that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good... It's good and educational overall to like show people what they should do. Especially after the, the misconduct has taken place, like getting their information, stuff like that.
awful and doing what he could to hold him accountable. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic